In this video, I'm going to be telling you what makes a good trail shoe. Welcome everybody to Broxbourne Woods, my sort of trail running playground. Love it up here. It's just absolutely stunning. Look, check it out. Now, like I said at the start, this video, we're going to be talking about trail running shoes. Now, I consider myself a novice at trail running. Um, I run around here. I've run, around, I've run out Snowden. Uh, I've run around a, a coastal path, but I wouldn't say that I'm sort of any good at it. I just enjoy it. But today I want to talk about the different sort of trail shoes that you can get because the, the trail shoe is an essential bit of kit, right? You know, it, I think it's more so, more important than even road running shoes because road running shoes you can kind of, you know, get pretty much anything sticky on and go out and run. But with trail shoes, you've got to think about a few different things. Um, so yeah, in this video, I want to talk about the different sorts of trail shoes, things to consider when buying a trail shoe. Um, yeah, so let's get stuck in. Right, so when choosing a trail shoe, I can really recommend getting to your local running store and having a chat with one of those guys or girls because you want to be comfortable and you want to be safe and you want to get something that fits really nice when you're out there uh, in these conditions because they're tricky conditions um, and also you want to discuss the sort of surfaces you're going to be running on and we'll come on to that in a minute about the different sort of shoes but I would really recommend the first thing you do when thinking about trail shoes is get along to your local running store and have a chat with somebody down there about the sort of thing that you're looking to do and they'll give you some advice right so there's like three types of trail shoes in my personal opinion uh, and by the way if you've got any sort of tips and hints about trail running shoes stick them in the comments but the way I look at it is you've got like lightweight or light shoes uh, in terms of trails. You've got them rugged and you've got that sort of off-road um, shoe, which is like your hardcore shoe. Let's start with the sort of light version, then we'll work down the scale. So the light shoe, you know, your packed soil, your gravelly paths, road to trail. Think Nike Pegasus Trail 3. Perfect example. Lugs, but only sort of light lugs bit of softer curtain, bit of softer, a softer cushioned midsole, a very breathable upper, probably a very light shoe as well in terms of how it feels. And it's that, it's that sort of hybrid shoe that can do most of the stuff in terms of lightweight trails. So like, as I said, gravelly paths, packed soil, uh, maybe some of those, you know, sandy paths along the beachfront, that kind of stuff where you also say, that you're coming from road to trail. You want something that's comfortable, that's something that's lightweight, that's something that's breathable, something that's, you know, you can also pick the pace up in as well. Uh, and you can sort of bob and weave around those lighter um, trails, you know, those nice wide gravelly trails that you come across. Next up is our rugged section. Uh, I think my A6 Trabuco 9 or A6 Trabuco Max. We've got deeper lugs. We've got lugs that are probably set in different directions. So like on A6 they have them, so you um, they're set so it helps going up and down the hills. Um, You've got probably more protection around the front. You'll probably have a tow guard. You might have a rock plate in there so it protects you against if you're running over stuff like I'm standing on now, you know, stumps and things like that. So it uh, protects the underneath of your foot as well. Um, you might have some stabilization in there uh, to help with the uneven ground. Now this has got Duo Max in it, the Tribuco 9. Um, and I'll put some B-roll up of the different shoes, but the, the B-roll, um, the, uh, the Tribuco 9, it's got the Duo Max, so it's, it stops you falling in. So you'll find some of the shoes, the rugged shoes, have um, some form of aid, uh, stability aid in them to help you um, combat some of the uneven ground and the movement that you're making. They'll probably be a little heavier because of the size of the lugs. Um, some of the lugs also will be, um, ha might have more sort of uh, rubber that's traction based. So again, helping you over the rocks and things like that. These shoes are your sort of mainstay of trail running shoes. They should be able to literally do anything. So great example for me is the Trabuco Max uh, when I ran out Snowden in those. You know, we went from road to rocks, to mud, to gravel trails, and, and, and more, and through water, and came back down. The uppers are still very breathable, but probably a little bit thicker. Uh, you'll probably have more foam in the shoe to aid co with comfort. Um, in terms of cushioning, I'll come on to cushioning in a minute, but there'll be different variations of, of cushioning in the shoe, uh, depending on what you like. Uh, and also, the heel to toe drops will differ, and I'll come on to that as well, depending on how you prefer 
to run. But the rugged shoe is, as I say, is there as the mainstay. It can take on this sort of forestry part. It can take on the slippery mud. It can take on the gravel part. It can run on beaches. It can run over rocks. It's meant to do everything. And it should be that nice balance between it. I absolutely love rugged uh, trail running shoes because I'm not really that hardcore. Uh, and for me, they're just perfect. In here, where I have everything pretty much thrown at it. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Unless I've forgotten something, let me know in the comments about rugged trail shoes. So lastly, we've got our off-track trail shoes. Now these hardcore bad boys of the trail running uh, world, you know, they've probably got much deeper lugs in them. They're definitely stiffer. Um, there's definitely probably more to the upper. Uh, they're not built for speed. They're built for protection, to look after you, for grip. Uh, and stability you, you'll see them they're, they're just built like tanks um, and they're designed not for speed but designed to keep you safe so you don't break your ankle uh, and to protect the underfoot uh, as much as the front of the foot when you're out there on those hardcore trails the way you are sort of going up and down mountains and you know you really are in the uh, in, in in nature so to speak <laughs> don't even know if it's the right word but you know what I mean hardcore now I don't even own a pair of these because the stuff I do it just it doesn't warrant a pair of those um, so I can't even suggest any I'll put some up on the screen in terms of hardcore trail running shoes um, there's some much better YouTube channels out there that cover them so check those out but yeah so you've got the light shoes you've got the rugged shoes which I think probably would fit most of us and then you've got the hardcore off-track shoes so I mentioned it earlier cushioning I think it's really important and it's and it comes down to personal choice if you look at my Trabuco uh, Max versus some of the other trail shoes out there. That's got a massive slab of flight foam in it and it's super, super comfortable. It's a firm ride flight foam, but it is very, very comfortable. And if you look at the size of the, the midsole in that, it's definitely built for cushioning. Now that, the idea of that shoe is that the cushioning uh, from the midsole is like a shock, shock absorber over some of this uneven terrain. The Hoka Spigo 4, and I think the Spigo 5 will do the same. It offers that higher stack of cushioning so they don't put a plate in it like I've got in these. Um, it, puts a pl it puts the cushioning, the, the midsole, which is like a shock absorber over the different terrain. But you want to be comfortable. Now, some people prefer a minimalistic shoe, and we'll come on to heel to toe, heel -to -toe drop in a second, but some people prefer a minimalistic um, trail shoe because they want to feel the ground, they want to feel what they're running over, they prefer to have less cushioning because um, they want to like, feel that they're going over the rocks so they, can, you know, they know what the surface is underneath them, and I totally appreciate that because everybody's different. But think about your cushioning, what level of comfort, or le level of comfort, but level of cushioning you want in that shoe. Some are different um, to others, so just check it out. I say, perfect example for me is the Trabuco and the Trabuco Max. Look at the different sizes uh, of the midsoles in them. For me personally, I like a little bit of cush, as always. One other thing to consider is the heel to toe drop or the offset. Now what that is, is the, um, the sort of, from how much, how much lower your toes are than your heel. That makes sense? Um, so you'll see in shoes like these Trabuco 9s, I think are a five mil drop or five mil offset. Um, so it's that sort of difference in the heel to the toe. Now that is all about how you're striking the ground in terms of your foot placement. I'll give you an example, 0 to 4 it is promoting more of a, a toe to midfoot strike as you're hitting the ground. And like 8 to 12 is, is more heel biased. So more of a heel striking bias in, in the drop. Um, I would say is a bit of advice is is whatever you are um, in your road shoes do the same in your trail shoes to start with and see how you get on with it if you're looking for that more minimalistic sort of natural um, feeling shoe and you've been running in an eight mil road shoe then I would definitely transition down to it because it can cause you problems in terms of you know you're putting a lot more load through the front of your foot and things like that and cause injuries and it's a it's a really different feel so if you want to go more minimalistic, more or nature driven when you are in the trails, as I said, some people prefer a natural feeling shoe underneath them with not too much cushioning and, and not too much of an offset, then transition down to it. That's, that's one of the bits of advice I would give you. Um, but yeah, so it's something to consider when buying your trail shoes. Think about what your road shoes are and maybe copy that to start with. And then if you want to transition out of it, just take your time. Okay, there's like two more things to think about. I would say, uh, firstly, do you want the waterproof? It's up to you. Personally, I would say no. He says that when he's uh, walking around in these um, GTX versions of the Trabuco 9. Now, Gore-Tex is a um, 
element or something that they throw on the shoe to make them water resistant. Uh, it just keeps some of that water out. And I like to run in them in the winter. It also a little bit warmer, just keeps my feet warm while I'm running along in the trails in the winter. Um, but personally, I wouldn't recommend it. Your feet are gonna get wet anyway, so it doesn't matter if they're waterproof or not. Uh, but it is something that you may wanna think about when you're getting your trail shoes. And the last thing I would say is price. Now I don't pay, all right, okay, right. Let's just take a step back. I'm very lucky I get sent a lot of shoes. But if I buy a pair of shoes, I don't pay more than 120 pounds for a pair of trail shoes. I always tend to buy, if I buy trail shoes and I'm not sent them, I always tend to buy ones that are on sale because I just, I've got no interest in buying the latest models for trail running unless I've got major FOMO like Tobes has gone and got the, um, I don't know when he got the Speedgo 4 or if he'll get the Speedgo 5. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get those shoes because I'm gonna have major FOMO. But apart from that, I tend to buy most of my trail shoes on sale. Like I had a pair years ago that I got for like 50, 60 quid. They're a pair of Solomons and nobody seemed to buy them like Solomons back then. Now they're like well, well in demand, Solomon running shoes. So back then, no one wanted to buy them and I picked a pair up for like 50, 60 quid, they were bright red. Um, so shop about is my point to you. For, for me personally, you know, I would always look for value. A and you can get the latest trail shoes, yeah, for like whatever you want to pay. But you know what? There's not that much difference in a lot of them. You know, as long as I said at the start, you've got decent traction, decent uh, lugs on there. If you're doing certain things, you've got protection underfoot and around the front of the foot. So just think about, just think about what you're going to be using them for and then budget accordingly. Right, so that's it. My guide to trail running shoes and what makes a good trail shoe. Actually, that's a good question. Let me know in the comments. What makes a good trail running shoe? So I said at the start, I haven't got really much of a clue about trail running. Uh, I love it. That's the only thing I can say is that I love trails. I'm not very good at them, but I do enjoy them. And I'd really recommend that you get out and get trail running people. But think about the footwear that you are using. That's the key. That's what I wanted to make the video, was because trail running shoes are so important. They can keep you safe. They can stop you falling over. If you're if you're running in lightweight trail shoes along here, you're going to be banging trouble because you're going to be slipping and sliding all over the place. You need a rugged trail shoe along here. But you might be just doing a bit of road work on your trails, forest path, and you're going to need a light shoe. So just think about it. And that's why I wanted to make the video today. But let me know in the comments what trail shoe you're running in at the moment. And is there any other tips that you've got about trail running shoes and buying trail running shoes? share them down in the comments so other people can check them out as well but that's it from me i'm gonna go and get changed and i'm gonna go and smash out a trail run <laughs>